Good morning, grasshoppers. This morning's planned stream. There we go. This morning's planned stream did not go off as well as I planned. However, at least we're here on time. We don't have any problems with fuse boxes or anything else for the most part. Yesterday we had an incredible amount of instruction which seems to only be available at the moment. At the moment, it only seems to be available. Pass the mash. Good morning. How are you? Thank you for following. Please be certain to join us on our YouTube as well. You can subscribe there. Make certain that you're in the dojo. I am Fide Trainer and National Master John MacArthur. I have to remember to join the tournament next time. But let's just see what we can do. I need to change the background now. For our sunset. We have a very uh, purplish background. I think I'm going with back to... Five. Fide, yes, Fide. The International World Organization. You can also type Fide and a name like Fide Space Magnus Carlson. Said, I will be here, just want to learn how to beat most people, ha ha. Well, that's a great question. I'm only as good as my students uh, sometimes ask questions, as after all, I might not, unfortunately, have an answer for you all the time, but there are three things that you certainly need to do, and you can pay attention to this in every single opening. In every single opening, you're going to have to control the center of the board, for example, right here, yes? And notice how these two players are fighting for the center with the use of pawns. And that is because when you open with the queen pawn, these pawns are already defended. So in order to attack the center, you're not going to be able to use a piece because the pawn is worth one, the knights are worth three, and the bishops are worth three. You can't attack a protected pawn with a piece. You're going to have to use leverage, which is why the queen's gambit is the time-honored best answer to d4, d5 of all time. Someone yesterday recommended an opening for intermediate players, and the opening they recommended was the London, and I fully disagree with this. I think that the London, of course, is a is a little bit of a crutch. You might accidentally start to put your pieces on those squares. Notice that this pawn on c3 is a weakness. Queen was attacking it, so white made a counterattack by capturing, and it was recaptured. So, first and foremost, all great openings fight for the center. You don't just occupy the center. So the London occupies the center, and then you develop your pieces very actively around the center. However, if you fight for the center, then you're developing your pieces with a purpose. And every time you develop your pieces with a purpose, attacking the center, you put your opponent under some pressure. Now, if they're under a little bit of pressure, it's just like the serve in tennis, right? To me, the major drawback with the London is that you're simply lobbing the ball over the net at no speed whatsoever. Now your opponent gets to return it with force. And this puts you on your back foot much of the time. And it's a, unfortunately an automatic drawback to this, uh, this need if you wish to have an advantage. I was raised with having an advantage out of the opening. And the number one reason why I often did not get an advantage when I was a younger player was because I didn't get my king castled. Notice that blacks can castle very quickly. And when the center got open, gets, becomes open, your king is in the center. So getting castled, getting your pieces out faster than your opponent as though it's a race. Just get them out and make sure that your rooks are connected. If these two rooks are seeing each other, it means that you have succeeded like right now, that that knight is protected by the bishop, very London-esque bishop. 
This was not by any means a London. Yet Black is losing material because Black's pieces did not make it out. If Black had placed his knight better, and this is a typical position for the London knights, if, if Black were white, he would have his knight stuck on this square. And very often, this bishop has to be on a better square. And it's not out there yet. Right? So if this knight were out here, even if that bishop were out here, I think white would have the same tactic. I'm sure that the well-heeled king, who's streaming right now, let's give him a quick shout out, is cursing under his breath at that fork that he allowed without paying attention to what's the opponent's idea. So now every time you move past the mash, sounds like it's a holiday uh, treat, right? Past the mash. Everybody loves mashed potatoes. The Well Hill King is also streaming our events every morning, in case I am not. And this knight is still extracting itself. There's like... I don't know, it's because he never had his bishop out. He never got That's his pieces finished. developed. Said, love hearing your thought process. Next up, very important. I just want to make sure that I get all of these things in because these are fundamental things. Every time your opponents move, you have to ask, what is their idea? Does it change anything about the way I am playing? Does it create new weaknesses? Where are the weaknesses? If you can identify targets, preferably not just one target, if you attack one target and they defend it, you attack another target, they defend it, you attack another target, they defend it, this is the element of time in chess. You have one move, they have one move, they can easily defend one weakness. However, if you do not attack that first weakness, just note it, look for more weaknesses, try to create more weaknesses, try to weaken more things, wait for things to be unprotected. Now you can attack two or more things with one specific move. And if you attack two or more things with one specific move, guess what's gonna happen? They will not be able to defend both of those weaknesses with just one move. So now you have the element of time in your favor. When you have the element of time in your favor, this means that you are able to get more accomplished with what's just one move. Past the mesh. Said, sorry was listening and then ads came out of nowhere. One more time, maybe we'll do it real quick. So there are three questions you have to ask yourself. Every time your opponent moves, you have to ask, what is their idea? Does it change anything at all about the way I am playing that I have to address? If they're attacking you, look for a counterattack. Don't just move away, just don't protect. Find yourself not just protecting. Make certain that you counterattack. Pass the mesh. Said, got that. Next up, once you identify their intention, perhaps their move created more weaknesses. Where are the weaknesses? If there's only one weakness, Try not to attack it, because you can attack one weakness, they'll defend. You attack another weakness, they'll defend. Wait for a second weakness, or try to create a second weakness. And when you attack two or more things with one move, one idea is not enough. Having two or more ideas behind every move is going to put pressure on your opponent, and you're going to succeed more often with the element of time. They only get one move to defend. Pass the mesh said love that thank you next up next up and this is another one that is most important what in the position are your worst placed pieces if you can improve your worst placed piece you will be improving your position significantly if you can find out what your opponent's worst placed pieces are perhaps those will be targets Perhaps those will benefit you. On the other hand, if you can find best place pieces, perhaps you can dislodge your opponent's best place pieces or exchange them off. Now this is a, uh, an idea in this position 
I'm going to save that one. This is an idea in this position that was presented by Alexander Lenderman. I really don't see the point in moving the same pawn twice. If at all possible, do not move the same pawn twice in the opening. Don't move the same piece twice unless it's absolutely necessary. I mean, what is he going to do with that now? He has fewer threats. The pawn is under pressure. Has the mesh. Said, I'm a watch the wrong play. You're watching the wrong play? So, one more time. Every time your opponent moves, DP said hi Now we do have a couple of issues here One of them being that my queen is a little bit exposed we're going to try to take advantage of this. It's only the thing that's bad. Your every breath that I take. So what does he have in this position? Nothing if you be an A C K R. All right, now my opponent seems to have a little bit of a plan, and I do have to watch out for the night moving. So we're going to need a decent discovery in this position. Two hearts that beat as one Their loves have just begun What in the world? Well, he does stop me from doing what I wanted to do Just your charm That's a little bit of a bother. Is he going to get back his pawn? That is the most important question at the moment. Let's just activate everything that we own. Yeah, we're just going to oppose everything here. You can the world to me. Oh. I found well, is this really a threat? That's craziness. Pass the mesh said, so fortify what we have. Indeed. Is my opponent's move a threat? We have 30 seconds to find out. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. I think this move 
That's perfectly reasonable. You are the only one. I want to trade all of my pieces, by the way. I want to trade all of the pieces. So if my opponent allows me to trade all the pieces, I'm quite okay with that. Now where are you headed? It's a double attack on that sense. We're going after his bishop. That protects the rook. Has the mesh. Said. So we are looking for end game. We're only gonna yes, we're looking for the end game in this position because we are up in material. And because we are up in material, our opponent must avoid the end game. Can I attack his queen in any way, shape, or form? Ah! You can only talk so much. I should have just gone with my first instinct. For me, this is my real Monday morning. The Monday morning after the weekend rapid in dojo. I mean, I was just totally winning that game. Very annoying. But I didn't like my position with bishop d7. So let's take a look at it again. Honestly, Capturing the pawn was not in my best interest. However, after the move e5, queen takes. Everything there is good for me right up until, as I mentioned, bishop to d7. I can solve my problems by giving myself some luft, and I also needed this square for my queen. So h6, from now on, I know is the best move. I reach this position quite a lot. 8-6, the bishop has to take. And I was expecting knight to e4, and this is where I was planning on bothering him in some manner, not unlike this one. Why this looked in the other way? I also wanted to know what would have happened on the immediate b5. That is the most forcing move, followed by bishop to b7. That's exactly what I thought would happen. I thought he might sack. I didn't want to weaken this square in any way either. And then I have a lot of stuff that is uh, hanging to a great extent. Oops, sorry, no whistling. So that wasn't the end of the world. I'm still slightly better. Bishop to b3 didn't make sense. And one more time, I needed to make Luft for my king. So I don't have any back rank weaknesses. Luft means air, like Lufthansa Airlines, the German airlines, Lufthansa. Air means that your king has an escape and you should try to create Luft whenever your opponent gives you a purposeful move to play h3 or h6. And now the king won't be back rank checkmate. So bishop takes c5 and I'm up a rook. Oh yes, I did look at this. Knight to d4. That is so silly of me. I looked at this concept earlier, and that's one of the other reasons I put my bishop on d7. Your game is on. Thank you, Deep Wolverine. Good morning, namaste. Just... I need to play knight f3. I've actually played exactly 2,000 games with the move 1e4. Oh, you know what my opponent just did there? Well, we're going for it. Oh no, my opponent is losing right off the bat. I feel terrible for him. I can't believe that he, he gave away a pawn and a tempo. He got a half of a move out of that, basically, where he should get a full move. 
if he was white, and this is called the bowden kizaritsky gambit, if we reverse this position, everybody's talking about the new kids in town. New kids in town. Like, what does he have? What can he play? He has to recapture with a piece. Got Queen H4. So he did have something in that position. He did actually have something in that position. That was the crazy part. I'm not going to waste any time with E5. <laughs> New kid in town. So on Bishop E3, Bishop takes E3, Queen takes, uh, F takes E3. Can he get to the H4 square quickly? I don't think so. I'm up at material, so we're going to castle queenside, and we're going to get our pieces developed much, much quicker. He has no squares for his knight. And now we're battening down the hatches the old-fashioned way. I have so many squares, I can return material if needed. Queen to g5 threatens queen to g3. I have queen f2 in many positions. Now black is down upon his king is less safe than mine. He has a wide open center. This opening, which is popularized on many YouTube streams, is a clear disadvantage for black. And there are about seven different ways you can play this as white. You don't have to find even one method. You just have to find the one method that works for you. And this opening is terrible. So you run into this opening once. You may lose to it. You choose your defense. Every time you play a tournament game, and you should be playing every day with a great amount of responsibility, Every time you play a tournament game, you must hold yourself accountable. And once you hold yourself accountable, you'll be analyzing your games immediately afterwards. Like, this bishop, this knight, I have three center pawns. By the way, the center pawns in the beginning of the game are more valuable, which is one of the reasons why Nearly everyone backs up this bishop rather than capturing. I'm trying to remember the well, I think the well healed king told me his name, I can't remember. Let's start protecting our weaknesses. Just in case. I want to trade queens. We already mentioned that. I don't understand. He got a check out of the deal. We are going to reroute ourselves. First things first, we need to simplify. Evil kid. Step Seven. out of danger. Well healed king as turn name it has Mike. Ah, Mike. I actually, yes. The problem for our names, they're so common. My name is John, John MacArthur. I've been uh, teaching chess for over 40 years. Well, not quite. No, I haven't been teaching chess for over 40 years. I'm only 39 years old, so I should uh, correct that. 
Ironically, the first person to get me teaching chess and the person that pushed me over becoming a master was the same world champion. My very first student informed me that the world champion had died in 1984 and I'm like, Karpov? Because they had not yet played the match with Garry Kasparov in September of that year yet. The match was a month away. So in the second week of August, 1984, I had to look up the article as the local paper delivery boy had informed me. It turned out former world champion Tigran Petrosian had died on August 13th, which I believe was a Friday. So he informed me of this on either a Saturday or a Sunday morning. And I believe it was a Saturday morning. So therefore, then I began teaching chess on the 15th of August. When I told him that I didn't, well, obviously I didn't know of his awareness or interest in chess. His father was the captain of the Berkeley chess team, the University of California, Berkeley, which is a very prestigious university with a lot of very smart kids. And I said, how about instead of spending 25 cents on video games, you would give me 25 cents, you buy a roll of quarters, and I'll play you 30 or 40 games. Now, granted, I made another mistake. I didn't bring in a clock. So I'm working for about 50 cents an hour as each game's taking 25 to 30 minutes. I didn't bring in a clock, which was unfortunate. Plus, he's a brand new player. I didn't want to intimidate him with a clock. So after a couple of dollars, I might have been able to win four, you know, six games in an hour and a half. I decided that this is not the best use of my time to teach for a dollar and 50 cents an hour, you know? So I said, how about if I just teach you how to play? So I spent the uh, rest of the afternoon uh, on Sunday. I spent a few hours with him on Sunday and then he came in on Monday and he said, either my father has been greatly exaggerating about his chess knowledge or University of California Berkeley has the worst chess team of all time. Said. Express. And I'm like, you are right. I think your father was just greatly exaggerating. But then again, to be the president of the chess club is a different story. You can be a super nice guy and you can be the president of a club. Monster 1979, what is your third move going to be? That's what I was afraid it was going to be. Here we're playing against a black lion. And to be honest, I have no idea what the Black Lion is meant to accomplish other than achieving a Philidor where White has F4 in. And I can probably play, although I'm not entirely positive that I want to play it this way, but I am. I'm going to play Queen Takes just to keep the pressure of playing E5 in the air. And if he weakens himself in this manner, I'm still going to be developing my pieces as rapidly as possible. And I'm going to be pinpointing this as a weakness. Magnus Carlsen has shown the power of Queen D3 in many positions when putting pressure on the D file. Said, how old were you when you began teaching? The bio seems to say you were years old. Oh no, we've got a math, uh, we've got a mathematician. I apologize. That is a very good question. So isn't this fascinating? He's moved the same piece twice. He's blocked in his bishop. He's not got his king, getting his king out of the center. I'm putting untold pressure on the d6 pawn. It's usually around now that he's going to have to move the same piece twice again or allow me a tremendous amount of leeway, which I don't think he's willing to do.
highway to hell. Very simple. I want your rook move. Not that hard to understand. Now he has some moves to attack my queen. So let's just keep it up. We're going to keep up the pressure here. So that he cannot attack us. So he can't capture here just yet. Which basically means we're recapturing in the center with our knight. Is this one pinned? If I take, he takes, he takes. He has no white square defenses. Oh, I'm attacking this knight. Let's see what he has. I'm attacking this knight. He needs to remove the defender of this pawn. Let's just throw this move in for grins. Just to make sure that he's not developing on that side of the board very easily. my moves still work with the exception of the fact that I'm not attacking this. Wow. Let's just come on down. You're the next contestant on the checking idea is correct. I'm going to end up losing time with my material as is, but now he can't castle. I'm just beginning the pens in my hand, ending unplanned. All of my pieces are developed. Staring at the blank page before you open up the dirty window, let the sun illuminate the words that you cannot find. Reaching for something in the distance. So close you can almost taste it Release your inhibitions Feel the rain on your skin No one else can feel it for you Only you can let it in No one else, no one else can well, I can't castle Turn yourself in words unspoken Live your life with arms wide open Today is where your book begins Let's start removing some defenders. I break tradition and sometimes my tries are outside the lines. Whoa, and we've been conditioned to not make mistakes, but I can't live that way. No, just staring at the blank page before or you. Where are you headed, sir? Go away. Oh no, this is not my day. 17 seconds, folks. Where are you going? Close, you can 
I can't afford too much here. Again, I lost on time. Oh, I'm very rusty. I should have started off the day with some puzzle streak like AK Nemsco does. I should have started off the day with some puzzles to warm up. That's really what I needed to do. This is my Monday, folks. This is the first. These are the first five games of the week because yesterday only. <laughs> you read it more carefully because the more firmly I believe that I'm 39 the more I hang on to my youth so I appreciate no one pressing the issue thank you though it does help right unfortunately here's something that really really does happen to you as you get older when I first moved to New York, I quickly acclimatized myself to the very fast nature of the speech here in New York. And by uh, move it by by speaking Every quickly, you, you get a lot more accomplished. Back line defense, I've proven my point. Now you were wrong. Ha! You thought that was that? Okay, let's just see. Uh, why is my game not analyzed? already let's see if you were less than a pawn down out of the opening i'm not shooting down the black lion i'm just saying that i'm playing an open game you're playing a closed game and against this particular move i think i needed to show just a little bit more respect but maybe not this was all good so in this position i don't necessarily know that i need to play bishop to g1 I can probably start opening up the lines now since you are here, right? So you're two pawns down on the seventh move, according to Stockfish. And on the third, on the seventh, after the seventh move, you are completely lost. A6 is completely losing. So against A6, it does not like it. It believes that I should play E5 right away. That makes sense. Yeah, you have no squares for your pieces. Your knight is in trouble. I have all the above threats. Along with knight to d5, bishop to g5, etc. Yeah, this does look like the best move for black to try to flail about just a little bit. Otherwise, knight to g8, right? Knight to g8 seems reasonable. So this is the culmination of the Black Lion success. Let's not play openings that don't develop our pieces. Let's not play openings that don't maximize our opportunities to place our pieces purposefully. White Bishop 22, my score is one and a half, one and a half. I'm gonna leave this game for just one moment. The last time I played White Bishop, he moved at the last possible minute. Said, John started teaching chess before he was born. <laughs> Indeed I did, Irina. Good morning, love. How are you? Namaste. I'm replacing my hello waves and stuff like that with namaste. So this, uh, this emote is going to get a little bit more air time. Namaste, love. That's what I think when I... Uh... Now, if this happens, by the way... Irina Chan said, Good luck at your tourney, John, the first M at work hour workday today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that.
Let's go to this one. Only played 164 games. He played one Blitz game. He played in Sue Mamoroa's birthday event. I think that was against me. Let me just check to see if he didn't show up for a game there. No, he's always shown up for his games. He didn't show up for a very long time against me, from what I remember. Evil Pit said. John starts calculating lines for games before the tournament has begun. That's correct. Now, is my opponent online? My opponent is not even online. I do, I do have a note somewhere, and I have had a note in the past that if you don't remember to withdraw from a tournament, although this may be, when you see a player without a flag, this flag's just not showing. It's Irina Chan. Said. Legend has it that John knows theory on lines that have never been played yet. <laughs> I know nothing. Let's just take a look at my. Uh, so I played 22 D4s, 2000 E4s. Can you imagine that I played? It's incredible. Twenty-two hundred, two thousand, and I need one more night to see three before the day is out. I have four hundred and seventy-five. I'm going to have nine hundred and forty-five. Oh no, my F four the other day that I I did. Oh, it just indexed. I have four hundred and seven. So I need three F fours to get to a nice round number. But I should get in sixteen. C fours. So I really need. Kit said. Oh, I have it. It just reindexed. You think I should be working on my one B three game? Is that it? Or my one E three game? I could easily work on my one E three game. That would be fascinating. Forty-one F threes. <laughs> that was what you were saying. Forty-one F threes. I could play nine more of those. That was the bong. That was the Greco. The Greckenstein. F three followed by King F two. I do win an incredible number of those, but I do need to work on my C four game, my E three game. And you know it's bad when I have to post that uh, video from Coach David Lazarus about Grandmaster John Fedorowitz studying uh, chess informant, whatever it was. The FI was there, it was a fluke, but I have replayed that game like times now. I S. <laughs> Not like this. Yeah, Igloo Kid. Are you from Alaska? No, I just play all of the openings. But I do appreciate it, Igloo Kid, that you, uh, the compliment. You know, when I don't, when I, uh, every now and then, let's just say last week I was under the weather, or maybe it was the previous weekend, I was a little under the weather, and when you get your uh, noses running, and you're blowing your nose, and you're sniffling, and all of that, you can't have facial hair. So I ended up shaving, I ended up uh, shaving my beard again. I had a beard for about a week and a half, two weeks, because I'd gotten tired of shaving. And this part gets very irritated if you have any facial hair whatsoever. Not good. So you will stream, see streams, perhaps even my logo on my social media. Please Say, subscribe on YouTube. No, from a warm country. Actually, I hope to see snow someday. 
though always been fascinated by it, hence the username. That's totally awesome. I am going to Paris in July and Iceland at the end of October, and I'm hoping that I will get the best of both worlds. If you are able to get to Paris for TwitchCon, I would love to meet you. We will be using the Discord as a means of meeting up. And I need to create the uh, text channel. And this is not a private channel, not a voice. And how do I, can I move it up? Yes. said, unlikely that I can be in Europe then, but great to know that you and Mike Well Healed King will likely be meeting. That's true. I wonder if he would like my... He and his wife are going, right? I have a room that I'm not using at the moment. It's got a fixed price. Uh, the room has a fixed price, not counting amenities though, unfortunately, there will need to be a credit card on it. Um, has a fixed price of about, I'm trying to think, it was $5.99. Oh yes, his girlfriend. It has a fixed price. It is, it is about 45 minutes away from the TwitchCon site. It will be available. I haven't canceled it yet because I might be able to stay a little bit closer if another place opens up that is cheaper. So I haven't canceled my uh, room yet. So I have a fixed room. It is nine days for $5.99, I believe. I remember it was less than $600. It came out to, it was like a $52 a night room and like a three-star hotel, not a four-star, not a two-star. I looked at all the reviews. There were no amenities in a four-star hotel that I was gonna be staying in the room for any period of time to uh, enjoy. I'm gonna be in Paris to be out and about. Unless it's raining, I will not be in the room. So this is a very common misconception that you need the knight. You don't need the knight. You just need to cut him off. Box him in. Now the king is in the quadrant of death. You can actually just move right in. And we're getting dangerously close to stalemating territory, but the quadrant of death is here. King moves back, king g3, and mate. Oh no. So you don't need the queen on the third rank. And now the knight is in the way. You don't need the knight, it was mate and two. No, it's mate and three. Now it's mate and three. Now it's still checkmate in two. One, two. He will find, yes, he found the mate in three. But the mate in two here was simply just grabbing the opposition and checkmating on the next move. I mean, you could do it in any manner. Grabbing the opposition, 
or forcing the opposition and checkmating on the next move. The quadrant of death is when you have a king in the box with the queen on e4, d4, f, uh, e4, d4, e5, or d5. And the king is in that square, you just bring your king in and you checkmate him on the back rank. You just use your king to push him back to the back rank. That's all you have to do. So the quadrant of death is very... All right, we're going to pick up the pace here. What did I need? What move did I need? I needed one more something. Every time I close my eyes, it's you. Rockstar forever. You know what? We're going to improve our statistics with E3. You that I miss. You that I The way, the way that I see. So if you have not yet gotten the latest informant, chess informant can be found here with an introduction article. Every world champion through Magnus Carlsen has grown up on the informant. Let's see if our opponent is an E4 player. I doubt that he wanted to play against the French. And the latest chess informant is 154. Da 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 Every time I wake up, it's Okay. Darling, it's you. Every time I close my eyes, it's you. Baby, it's you. You that I dream of, you that I miss, you that I want to so badly kiss. You that I look at me the way, the way that I see. How about this for an improved Stafford Gambit? Nothing worries just you and me. My hair. So now he has an isolated pot on E5. Da -da 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 -da. Every time I wake up, it's you. Every time I close my eyes, it's you. What is he threatening? I'm not sure what he's threatening. There's no back rank mate, huh? I had a better move. Bishop to G5 was a better move. Let's keep him from developing his pieces to the best of our ability. It looks as though... I don't need nobody. Yeah. 
We're pinning the knight to the d8 square. I don't like it. Well, that would lose my rook. Where is the bishop going? Where is that bishop going? Desperado. Make sure we don't have bishops of opposite colors. Let's fix those pawns on dark squares. All right. Well, let's just keep improving our position here. Oh no. That was close, folks. I almost drew that game. Quadrant of death. So we improved our one E3 statistics by how much? We were at 56% before. Oh no, we played 202 E3s? Wait a minute now. All right, well, we, uh, we're going to play a lot more E3, B3. I don't think that game counted. Let's just take a look at it. E4, E3, E5. And when I play E4 in this position, I am 60%. So that looks like the way to go, right? And our game has registered. In this particular line, I played bishop c4. What happened when I played bishop c4? I lost to reach attack? Chances are I just lost to reach attack.
This was probably a much more effective move. What do we think? This was a far more effective move. What was I thinking? Pretty hard to defeat that move. Everybody is hanging. <clears throat> I think I'm a full rook up after that, right? I'm a full rook ahead in this position. So anyway, I must have lost this game another way. Maybe on time. Ah, now I remember it. I really went all out. I really did, I went all out. What was the time control in this game? Fascinating, right? Not get that auto scroll on. I'm a pawn ahead. And I'm a seriously a pawn ahead. Knight F3. Knight takes, rook takes, and king takes. I don't need, I literally do not need the move um, rook to d1, check self pitting myself. Bishop to d5 I know is the best move. Yep. Now the computer doesn't register this as a mistake. It did not suggest the move bishop d5 is better. Like literally I went from 3.7 to 1.9. I went from being almost a rook ahead to throwing away two pawns of an advantage. And we're back. Bishop e4, f3, bishop d5, c4, bishop g7, thank you very much. Even knight takes g6 was the best move. I thought he should try for bishop takes f3, knight takes h8. Oh, but he's down a piece there. So he has to take. Right. Does my number ever drop in this particular position? Never drops, and now it's mate and seven. One, two, Three. And it was uh, a nice smooth win for the most part. So you had a better move here. I guess it was this one, six, five, four, three, but it went from six to four. So on this move, If he wanted to maintain it, he had to move away from the pawn and try to maintain opposition. I have no idea. Very strange that it would be mating six with king to g4. And king to g6, it's that much faster, right? So the quadrant of death that I'm talking about is right here. Let's just assume that I can play this check. And then all we have to do is just move in with the king. This quadrant, your king goes to the knight's favorite square and the queen is on one of these four squares for the quadrant of death. And I recovered to at least finish on the first page, everybody. Crazy. Oh, 609 and I must get running. I will be upping the YouTube content this week. I have quite a number of new things, not to mention YouTube content is coming. Please subscribe and hit the bell for the notifications. TikTok content is coming. Social media like Instagram will get you, I believe, to the TikTok, but I'm not entirely positive. But I am posting the reels on Instagram as well. I'm not entirely positive if TikTok is overrated just yet. But again, I will be in 
Paris in October. I will probably be in Vegas. Oh no, I, can't, I don't think I can be in Vegas. Let me just take a quick peek at the TwitchCon standings. TwitchCon, October 20th to the 22nd. There's a small chance that I will be at TwitchCon October 20th to the 22nd. I'm going to put that one. Let's do this. Join me. I must run. Oops, control. Possibly in Vegas. Let me just put that in there just in case. There we go. Let's see what Paris looks like now. Now, why doesn't Paris TwitchCon work that well? Let's amend that one. Is that shorter? I don't know. Oops, control Z. But I can just go with twitchcon.com to make it shorter. the way it's working so we'll see where are we at it everybody I am looking for my favorite streamers very very quickly and everyone is offline on a Tuesday morning because this is the worst morning This is the worst morning to try to find meetups on Twitch. Who can I ask about TwitchCon Paris? That's what I want to know. Chop to Chop? Even Chop to Chop is on. Have a great day, everybody. 
We're going with the starting screen. I mean the ending screen. We're gonna roll the credits. If you've not yet subscribed to Chess Informant, if you've not yet subscribed to our YouTube, if you've not yet joined the Discord or the socials, I will follow you back unless you're a street unless you are listed as private. If you're listed as private, you're just gonna to have to drop me a line and I'm gonna to have to remember to check my messages. Please follow and I will follow you back on Twitter certainly. If I recognize you, you can always drop me a note on Twitter or in the Discord. I don't follow back uh, anyone who seems to be advertising things other than chess. Cheers and ciao.